The identity plate is a very important part of each and every page on your website. It's where you can brand your page with your logo as a photographer or as a company. Uh, and it's a visual element that can be recognizable and serve to tie every page of your site together. So you've got a control group dedicated specifically to the identity plate, which if you choose not to use, you can disappear simply by disabling that checkbox. Why you'd want to do that, however, is beyond me. So we're going to leave it turned on. And by default, it's going to use your Lightroom's uh, main identity plate, which in this case is my name and a really terrible Zatfino font uh, that Lightroom uses by default. Um, so naturally, we want to change this. To do that, we simply click on it. If you have presets already saved, you can select one of those, or you can go into Edit. Here in the edit box, you can change the color, you can change the text, and you can get rid of this god-awful Zapfino font face. Go with something nice, like, I don't know, Helvetica. Um, but what I like to do even more is to use a graphical identity plate, which, if you have created uh, an identity plate or a logo already using Photoshop or some other image editing software, you can select Use Graphical Identity Plate and then tell Lightroom where to fetch that file. So I'm going to go into Pictures and I have an ID Plates folder and we're going to use this one. So I choose that and hit, well, before I hit OK, if I want to save that as a preset for later use, you can go ahead and do that here. Or you can just hit OK. And as you can see, it changes there in the controls and it also changes up here on my page. Now this may or may not end up being my final identity plate for this page design, but it's something for us to look at for the time being. Um, ID plate location, you have several options. The ID plate can go at the top in the header. It can go beneath the menu if you want the menu to appear on top, for example. We can just move the whole thing below that, reverse position. Or you can insert the identity plate into the menu itself which looks a little weird right now, but later on I'll show you some uh, design techniques where this becomes a very cool feature and allows you to achieve various types of layouts. So to begin with, let's just take this back and put it in the header, uh, which is its default location. Uh, the next thing we have are some positioning sliders. By default, they are set at 50%, which is the precise middle of that header space. So if you want it centered, 50% for X and 50% for Y. Setting these to uh, others will shift it left or right accordingly. So if I take the X position to zero, that tells the page to place my identity plate to the far left. And it's at this point where I can come back up here and return to my header settings. Remember I told you I'd, I'd show you some use for this fixed header width? Well, if you're using a left-aligned or right-aligned design and you don't want it, say someone's using a very large display, you can see that the identity plate is now way off to the left. And maybe I want it left-aligned, but I want it left-aligned with the edge of my gallery. I don't want it far off on the left side of the browser. So I can accomplish that by enabling the fixed header width option. I can then set the header width to center things up. So in this case it's 960 pixels which is the relatively close to uh, the width of my thumbnail grid and you can see now that when I go on a very wide display uh, it stays left aligned to the center of the page or to the page content rather than being left aligned to the browser viewport. Um, and the same thing works on the right as well. So if I take X position and crank it up to 100 it tells the identity plate to shift to the full right and again it's going to stop off over here somewhere. Um, I can go ahead and increase the height to make more space for the identity plate. This one is taller than what we were looking at a moment ago. I'm going to try cranking this to about 135. I think that'll still fit. Yes, it still fits. Um, and then you can use the Y position slider to move this thing vertically. So at the moment it's centered vertically in that space. 
I can set this to zero to push it to the top so that the very top of my identity plate, actually if I make the header height shorter, this would be easier to see. So now it's uh, the very top of the identity plate is at the top of the header, whereas if I push the Y position to zero, it will align the identity plate according to the bottom of the graphic. So as you can see now we're at the bottom and my title is pushed way up where I can't see it. So obviously I need a taller header. So I'm going to go back to center on both of these by setting them to 50. And the last slider we have in here is uh, for the border bottom. So you can apply a border to the bottom of that header. And you can use this color picker to change that border's color. So let's take this back to zero for now. I'll show you some designs later on where that border becomes an important design element. Uh, but for the time being, that is it for the identity plate.